In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come to pray this morning. We'll pray a votive Mass of the Blessed Virgin Mary, asking for her help and guidance in these times where some people are struggling. In our prayer today, we'd we'll ask to remember Raymond King, who is deceased, Luxia Tranthi Van, who passed away seven days ago, and also Ronald Melia, who's undergoing major surgery. Now, as we come to pray, we acknowledge our failures. We ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Lord God, you have given the Blessed Virgin Mary to your church as a beacon of unfailing hope. In your goodness, grant that those who are burdened by life's cares may find in her consolation and strength, and those who despair of salvation may find their hearts warmed and uplifted as they turn to her in their need. This prayer we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The promise of inheriting the world was not made to Abraham and his descendants on account of any law, but on account of the righteousness which consists in faith. That is why what fulfills the promise depends on faith, so that it may be a free gift and be available to all of Abraham's descendants, not only those who belong to the law, but also, also those who belong to the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As scripture says, I have made you the descendants of many nations. Abraham is our father in the eyes of God, in whom he put his faith and who brings the dead to life and calls into being what does not exist. Though it seemed Abraham's hope could not be fulfilled, he hoped and he believed. And through doing so, he did become the father of many nations, exactly as he had been promised. Your descendants will be as many as the stars. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O children of Abraham his servant, O sons of the Jacob he chose, he the Lord is our God, his judgments prevail in all the earth. The Lord, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord, the Lord remembers, remembers his, his covenant, covenant forever. For he remembered his holy word, which he gave to Abraham his servant. So he brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with shouts of rejoicing. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord, and you also will be my witnesses. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, if anyone openly declares himself for me in the presence of people, the Son of Man will declare himself for him in the presence of God's angels. But the person who disowns me in the presence of people will be disowned in the presence of God's angels. Everyone who says a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they take you before synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how to defend yourselves or what to say, because when the time comes, the Holy Spirit will teach you what you must say. The Gospel of the Lord. Just imagine these words. It is time to leave everyone you know behind. It is time to leave the country with which you are familiar, the homeland which has nurtured you from your earliest moments. It's time to head out into the wilderness to an unknown place. It's time to begin the journey where the only guarantee of success is from your unseen God. Try to imagine the turmoil such a request would trigger. Could you really trust this unseen God? Could you really be strong enough? Will his wife survive the rigours of the journey? Yet despite the harsh demands, Abraham gathers together all his possessions and together with his wife Sarah and nephew Lot, he begins a journey into the unknown. And this is the beginning of the family of faith. Abraham is the obedient person. He hears the voice of God and responds with unwavering trust and dedication. This is the trust and dedication that bears fruit in a multitude of nations. Paul is convinced that at the heart of the Christian gospel is the call to be faithful in the same way that Abraham was. Abraham was put right with God by his trust in God's promises. This promise declared God's loving plan for Abraham and his descendants, and Abraham obeyed. It does raise the question of how much more should a Christian be justified through faith, for we have witnessed the outpouring of God's gracious love in Jesus Christ. For we, baptised into his death and resurrection, have received grace upon grace from Jesus Christ. It is with full knowledge of the saving love that God now calls us to leave the painfully familiar landscape of sin. It is now the fitting time to move into this uncharted territory known as the Kingdom of God. Jesus, in his public life and preaching, knows that some people will be biased against him. But some people will feel themselves threatened by him. And some people will actively work against him. What he says is that words spoken against him can be forgiven. What is not forgivable is the willful refusal to admit the truth when one sees it. This is to go against that precious voice within each one of us which points us to whatever is good and true. You know, the Holy Spirit lives within each human being which means each one of us as well, and he knows each of us through and through. The human conscience is the voice of that same Holy Spirit calling us to seek and do the truth. Now it's important that we listen for that voice each day. In this we are guided by the church, the sacred scriptures, our prayer time, the common good, and of course the Holy Spirit himself. But it needs an openness on our part to receive the message, to decide what is the correct path to take. And that's important so we don't make God's our own will and make that somehow God's will. We're called to declare ourselves for Jesus. It's something that makes many people uncomfortable. You know, we have the most amazing reassurance if we commit ourselves to this that we will be given the right words 
whenever we need them, we'll know, we'll discover we'll ex exactly what we need to say and do in every circumstance. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church. The good news of Jesus empowers us to pray in his name for our needs. We pray for the church who was Abraham's descendants, walking in faith and with hope. Lord, hear us. We remember those who, declaring themselves for Christ, suffer for their faith. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers and for those who pray for us. Lord, hear us. We pray for our own needs of today and those of all our brothers and sisters. We pray for those who are ill, especially from the coronavirus. We pray for their families. We pray also for those who have died. Lord, hear us. Gracious God, your word challenges and transforms us. Help us to walk in your ways. Your word transforms our gifts of bread and wine, so that they become for us the body and blood of Christ. Help us to celebrate his saving mysteries and these prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Now let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, receive this offering with the prayers of your people, so that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no request of ours may go unanswered, no petition may be uttered in vain. We ask for this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks with all our hearts for your gift to our human family of Jesus Christ, the author of our salvation, and of Mary his mother, the model of divine hope. Your lowly handmaid placed all her trust in you. She awaited in hope and conceived in faith the Son of Man, whom the prophets had foretold. With untiring love, she gave herself to his service and became the mother of all the living. Mary, the fairest fruit of Christ's redeeming love, is a sister to all the children of Adam as they journey towards the fullness of freedom and raise their eyes to her, the sign of sure hope and comfort until the day of the Lord comes in glory. In our joy we sing with all the choirs of angels. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Andrew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Without contact, we offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, may the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We pray now the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us now pray. Lord God, we have received this sacrament of faith and salvation. As we honour the Blessed Virgin, Mother of our hope, we pray that we may come to share with her in your own divine love. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify God in your daily lives.